Did you know there are over six different ways to create an object in GDevelop? This video will show you each of those ways from basic to advanced. I will also show you how to avoid some common problems when creating objects. The first thing you want to do when creating a new object is to click here, add a new object. You can add objects from the asset store, or you can click create a new object from scratch. There's a variety of object types you can create a sprite, and you can even just draw it with Piscal. That's scary, but <laughs> you get the idea. Now each of these objects on the panel here have properties. You can see their animations, if they're sprites. You can see the behaviors that have been applied, any variables or effects that you want to add to the object. But there's still no objects in the game yet. These objects here are really just represent templates or starting properties for, for the objects. One of the easiest ways to get objects into the game is to just drag them from the object panel into the scene. This is an instance of the tree one object. If you click on it, you'll see the properties of this object instance. And if you look in the instances list, you'll see the object here. Let's add another one. You can see another instance showed up. This is a very common way to build games. You can do almost anything by hand this way. It's a very manual way to build things, but it's a very fine way to do it. A lot of people just use this method, but there are many other ways. Let's look at ways you can create objects using events. The first thing I'm going to show you is the wrong way to create objects. When the left mouse button's down, it's going to create the tree 1 at the position of the mouse. Pretty basic. Let's try it. I'm going to click. I clicked once, and I see one tree. But I bet you there's actually more than one tree. Because even though a click is very fast to a human, to a computer, it's very slow. Let's use the debugger to find out how many we created. We created four trees. If you click on each one, you'll see the X and Y position are exactly the same. A great way to demonstrate this is to hold down the left button and look at all those trees. I'm creating approximately 60 per second based off the frame rate of the game. It's a pretty cool effect, but right now we've got hundreds and hundreds of trees. And most of the time, that's not what you want in your game. The right way to do it is to have a trigger once. So when I push the left mouse button down, it will only trigger this action one time. So I click once. It looks like one tree, but let's verify using the debugger. There's one tree here. Perfect. We can also do pretty much the same thing using a JavaScript event. This is a condition where the exact same left button trigger once, and this is a sub event that's a JavaScript. This is very basic, but what it's going to do is create the tree one object, and it's going to set the X and Y position to the current mouse X and Y. It's really the same thing as this, only written in JavaScript. Let's test this. Click once. Let's check the debugger. One tree. Let's try another method. We can create a random object from a group of objects. You notice I have nine different trees. I put those into an object group called All Trees. You can see the nine trees here. I named these in a very specific way. They all have the word tree, and then they have a number at the end. That's so that I can use this method. So this is an action. Among objects, and this is the group name, all trees, create an object named, and this is a dynamically generated name. It's going to take the static part, tree, and it's going to add a random number between 1 and 9. And so that's going to be tree 1 through tree 9, randomly picked every time I click the left mouse button, and it will be created at the, the position of the mouse. Let's try this. First tree, 
looks like that. Second tree, third tree, fourth tree. Oh, we have a repeat, but there's a one in nine chance we'll get a repeat. If you want to include some randomness in your game, make your game seem more natural, you can use this random creation method. Another really cool feature of GDevelop is the external layouts. Now an external layout is almost like a scene that you can insert into an existing scene. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. So under external layouts, I have two created here, but I'm just going to create a new one. When you create an external layout, you have to choose the scene that you are wanting to use because it needs to uh, know what objects are going to be available to you. I only have one scene, so I'm going to choose that. And it looks just like a regular scene. We have access to all of these objects, and we can put them in the scene. And this is how you can pre-build levels or maps. And then you can insert these dynamically in the middle of the game. Let me show you how this works. Close that one that we created. And I'm going to use this custom tree and the smile. So the custom tree I built, it's got this black sprite in the back. I have blue and white sprites on it. And then I have tree 9. And I just place those on there. I also have the smile external layout. This one is one black object and all of these white objects. So let's see how these work in an event. I set it up so when the left mouse button is down, trigger once, it'll create the objects from the external layout custom tree. And then when I use the middle button, it's going to create the smile. And down here at the bottom, I have a right mouse button to restart the scene. That's how I can clear all the objects. Left mouse button is custom tree. There it is. You can do another one. You can even just throw them on top of each other. Let's clear those off. Now I'll try the middle button. The external scene is just getting inserted wherever you specify it. If you double click on this action, you'll see that it does let you choose the origin of the external layout. And I just chose the mouse again. So that's a really powerful way to create objects. What if you want to create a lot of objects at once? There's an extension that I created called Create Multiple Copies of Objects. This is what it looks like. When the left mouse button is down, we're going to create five rows, five columns of these blue objects. So five times five is 25 objects going to be created. And they'll be positioned at the mouse. There'll be no space between the objects. Let's see what this looks like. I'll click. There's 25 objects created. Every time I click, it's creating 25 objects in the blink of an eye. OK, so that gives you a solid block of objects. But it actually does more than that. We can play with these numbers to include space. Let's add some space. So now we have horizontal groups of objects. If we put space between the columns also, it look like this. So now we have an evenly spaced grid. And if we want to just do vertical columns, we could say zero, row, zero space between the rows and only space between the columns. I've actually used this to create uh, walls. So if you say one column and 10 rows, you can create like a left wall and you could do one on the right. And then if you do the opposite, you can make a top and a bottom without having to drag these into your scene manually. This can actually do some really fun things. Let's create multiple objects at once, and then let's delete some of them. So for the first option, if I click the left mouse button, it's going to create four rows and 20 columns of the blue objects. And it's going to have space between the rows only. We're also going to create a player. This uh, object has the platformer character behavior and it's going to be created 64 pixels above the mouse. Then we're going to delete 75% of the blocks. And the trick that I'm using with this, I'm using the random float and range. Random float just means it's going to pick a random number between 0 and 1, including all of the decimals. And if the number is below 0 0.75, it's going to delete them. So 75% of these objects will be deleted. Let's try this before I show you the, the second one. Okay, so if I click left click, it'll create all of those objects 
and delete 75% of them. And here's the player. So you can actually control this player. And this can add a dynamic, randomly generated level for you for like a complex uh, platformer. Um, and you can adjust that percentage of how many get deleted to increase or de decrease the difficulty. One thing I discovered when creating this project is if you create a lot of these, it reminds me of the final scene in the movie Prestige. Uh, if you didn't know what's happening, it's creating these players and deleting 25% of the blocks. And then when I move them, they actually all have the same platformer character behavior. So they will all follow the same instructions. However, they're not obviously on the same platforms. So sometimes they'll fall, sometimes they'll jump. And it could be a really fun game mechanic to try to get as many of these across a level, you know. Fun. The second event I wanted to show you was if I click the middle mouse button, I'll create the same four rows and 20 columns. But instead of deleting 75% of the blocks, I'm going to delete every fifth block. What this code says is modular division it's going to divide the creation ID, which is a variable that the extension automatically adds to objects when they're created, and it will divide that by five. And if it's, it divides evenly, it will equal zero. So this will basically means every fifth object will be deleted. Let's try this. Here we go. Every fifth object has been deleted. And you can use this to create a pattern in your game. While the create multiple copies of object extension is very useful, it was also kind of restrictive in that you had to calculate in math where objects are going to be placed. So I created another extension called rectangular flood fill. This extension will create fill objects that cover the rectangular area of the target objects. So in this case, what I'm doing is it will create blue objects that will cover all of the black objects in the scene. To do that, you have to place some of those objects in the scene. And anywhere you place them, blue objects will be created on top of them. One thing that's great advice when using this, you want to make sure that your grid size, 32 pixels, matches the object that you're going to be placing on it. So this blue object is exactly 32 pixels also, so it matches the grid. And that means you can set these black objects to be any size that stays within the grid and the blue objects will be created correctly. All right, let's review the event. Left click, it's going to create those objects. Let's try it. So we place those on the scene. Left click fills the rectangular flood fill, placing these blue objects everywhere there was a black object. So that's really cool because you can design your level using large objects like this. And if you want small objects to be placed on top, this extension helps you do that. Okay, so I like the rectangular flood fill extension, but what if I don't want to cover everything? Well, in this example, I start by creating three of these smile external layouts using an action. At the beginning of the scene, it's just gonna create them. And there's the three smiles. When I click the left mouse button, it's gonna do the rectangular flood fill, just like we did in the previous example. Let's test that. So if I click left, it's gonna cover up where the black objects were. But what if we wanna remove these blue tiles where those white ones were? We can do that just by doing a collision check. We did have to do one option on the collision. This by default is no. It ignore objects that are touching each other, but we do wanna ignore objects that are touching each other. Since all of these objects are touching, I'm going to do the left click, that's the rectangular flood fill, and now I'm going to do the middle click, it does this collision check, it's going to delete the blue objects, like that. So rectangular flood fill, delete objects that are in collision with. So this can be a great way for you to build a game really quickly with very few events and without having to manually place all these objects. 
there we go. I promised you six different ways to create objects, and now you know them. And I hope they left a smile on your face just like these nice sprites. I hope you're having as much fun with GDevelop as I am. If you would like to vote for future videos or future extensions for me to work on, why not try visiting my Victorious Games Twitter feed? I post almost every day on things that I'm working on or things that I find interesting, and it's almost always about GDevelop. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. See ya.